Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I am bringing you a pretty substantial book haul. I have um, 22 books to talk about today. <laughs> a lot of these I've already read though, so I'm actually going to start by whizzing through those books because I have spoken about them in other videos before and I have reviewed them. So starting with these three books, Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan, which is about a young woman who teaches English as a second language in Hong Kong and it's about two relationships that she has while she's out there. The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagadar, which is a female-female young adult romance that talks a lot about the coming out experience and also cultural appropriation and On Shut by Una Min Kavanagh, which is a memoir all about the author's upbringing and being a child that was adopted from Vietnam but grows up in Kerry and the book really looks at her relationship with her grandfather, how much she loves Irish culture but also the racism that she has experienced in Ireland. I spoke about all of these books in my most recent reading wrap up so I will leave that linked if you want to hear more of my thoughts. Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert was a book that I picked up because it was the first book in Shars Bipolar Book Club and this book mainly looks at the relationship between two siblings in a blended family and their experiences of understanding their own sexuality but also their own mental health. And also The Day I Fell Into a Fairy Tale by Ben Miller which is just such a cosy, magical, whimsical story about a young girl who falls into a fairy tale in her local supermarket. These two I read back in January so again I will leave that wrap up linked. I have two picture books, the first of them is The Duck Who Didn't Like Water by Steve Small. This is a really tenderly told and beautifully illustrated story about friendship and being open to new friendships and navigating your emotions. The Invisible by Tom Percival is another stunning picture book and it's about what happens when Isabel and her family move to a new part of the city and she starts to feel invisible and it's about noticing the people around you and paying attention to those people and seeing the beauty in your surroundings and the people that you are surrounded by. I read these two in February so again I will leave that wrap up linked. But while we're here let's stick with picture books. I have three picture books that were very kindly sent to me by Little Tiger. So I have The Girl Girls and The Boys by Lauren Ace and Jenny Luley. Now I had read The Girls before which is a beautiful picture book all about the friendship between these four little girls and we witness them growing up and despite these girls going through very different experiences they are still bonded together by their friendship and The Boys is the follow-up which is kind of the same idea but for four little boys again watching them grow up and the way that the girls are connected to the boys in this narrative is so cool and also in terms of like diversity and depicting lots of different life experiences, different sexualities, different body types in these books. I just love them so much. I have already, as I said, previously read The Girls, but I've already read The Boys, so I'll be talking about it in my April wrap-up. And I will also be talking about Turtle Rescue in my April wrap-up, which is a picture book before more confident or experienced readers. This is definitely one that is focused on learning and the illustrations are a little bit more intricate than some other picture books. But this is a book that is about two characters named Flora and Fauna who are well-known explorers and they investigate why turtles have stopped showing Showing up on the beach in order to lay their eggs. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm really looking forward to talking about this one in my wrap up. I also have two poetry books that I've already read that I want to talk about. So The Bees by Carol Ann Duffy. Now this is a collection that I actually already owned but in a different edition but let me tell you why I'm so hyped to have this. So you may or you may not be aware that I changed jobs towards the end of last year and I was given a number of very very thoughtful and generous leaving presents. Like I was just, I was absolutely spoiled. <laughs> but I guess because of like the work world situation of presents kind of arrive in like dribs and drabs and this was the last one to arrive and it is signed and I was I genuinely I opened this and I cried. <laughs> Carol Ann Duffy is one of the biggest inspirrations in my life like discovering her poetry when I was at university was like a game changer for my whole life so some of my very lovely friends and former colleagues arranged for Carol Ann to sign this for me and get it sent to me and I was just a very happy girl. <laughs> Another poetry collection one I bought for myself is Who is Mary Sue by Sophie Collins. Again, this is one that I've already read and I will be talking about in my wrap up. But this collection is kind of a blend of poetry and prose and reflections and reporting that explores the fan fiction idea of Mary Sue. This idealized female character that is just supposedly a reflection of the author and how they want to be perceived or an idealized version of themselves. I actually haven't been buying a lot of poetry recently um, so I was really excited to delve into a new collection that I hadn't read anything from before but as I said we'll share more of my thoughts at the 
the end of the month. Before I get onto the rest of the books that I got from publishers, I'm gonna talk about two books that I bought for myself. I have The Love Square by Laura Jane Williams. I really enjoyed Our Stop by the same author. It was a really fun rom-com that I just had a really great time with. So I have been really excited to read another book from her, though I've heard really mixed reviews of this one. I think the way this book is blurbed is about this girl meeting three different guys and it being a love square. But from what I've heard from other reviews is that it's kind of obvious which one she's gonna end up with. But I think going into this book with that knowledge now, I'm not gonna get wrapped up in the expectation of it being exactly what the title suggests. I have been really loving rom-coms recently and finding my way within this genre. Earlier this year, I did a romance reading vlog. So if you would be intrigued for me to read that as part of a part two, leave me a comment down below and let me know. Next, I have a book that I have wanted for so long. I have Strange Antics, A History of Seduction by Clement Knox. I desperately wanted the hardback of this book, which isn't something that often happens to me. I normally definitely prefer to wait for a paperback, but I think this book is just so beautiful and I really wanted to own it as like a beautiful object as much as I'm excited for the contents. So as the subtitle tells us this is a book about the history of seduction taking us from the ideas around the Garden of Eden right up to the modern day and it explores this idea of seduction as a historical and cultural phenomenon. It looks at sexual revolutions and early feminism. I do believe this is a very very research heavy book and is quite academic so it may take me a little while to get through this one but one of my favorite areas of nonfiction is learning more about sex and sexuality and gender and feminism so I'm just utterly delighted to own this one. Let's stick with the nonfiction. I have Make It Happen by Amika George. This one is already out but I think the publisher HQ had a few spare proof copies going so I asked for this one. The author is a student at Cambridge University but when she was only 17 she started the Free Periods campaign and this book is basically her sharing her journey of activism and showing us how we can be better activists as as well. It's quite a slim one so I would like to get to this one really soon. I have two books that were very kindly sent to me by Watkins. So I have Ahead of Our Time by Judy Pietkus. I'm gonna level with you guys. I've never known how to pronounce that name and how to pronounce that publisher. I gave it a good try, okay? <laughs> but this is a non-fiction book about how the author started her publishing company at a time when women weren't expected to be entrepreneurs. She had no university degree or financial backing. She had a young family and she started this global brand by herself. As you may be aware, I am in the publishing industry so obviously this perspective of being a woman in this industry being an entrepreneur in this industry is something that I'm going to be really intrigued to learn about. I also have Living and Loving in the Age of AIDS which is a memoir by Derek Frost. Much of this book is focused on the AIDS epidemic in the 1980s. I like many people watched It's a Sin earlier this year and I thought it was a really powerful and entertaining but obviously very heartbreaking show and I think as a queer person myself learning more about this part of queer history is something that is really important. So saying I'm looking forward to reading this book doesn't sound quite right but I think it's a book that I will get a lot of value from and learn a lot from and I think it's going to be a really powerful read. Next I have The Lock-In by Phoebe Luckhurst which was sent to me by Michael Joseph. I read about half of this book when it was going round on submission and I absolutely loved it so I am so excited to have this proof copy of it so I can see how the story has developed and actually read the ending of it. <laughs> so this is about a London house share and what happens when a group of people get stuck in an attic when the downstairs is flooding. So we have these three housemates and the one night stand of one of the housemates. It's a locked room rom-com. That's what it is and I am so excited. I just loved this. I loved it so much when I first got a taste of it so really excited to read this one. Next I have The Listeners by Jordan Tannehill. This one was sent to me by Fourth Estate and I am so intrigued by this book and it had one of the most amazing like publicity stunts that I have ever seen in publishing. It was such a simple idea but it was so effective. Basically there were you know those advertising sheets where there's like a phone number that you can rip off. They were like stuck in various places and also posted online and if you phoned the phone number there was a very mysterious voice on the other end and if you left your contact details they sent you a proof. So simple but so ingenious and I am now so excited to read this book. And it worked so well because I don't think this is necessarily the type of book I would have paid attention to if it wasn't for that and now that I have read the blurb sounds so intriguing to me. So this is about a woman named Claire who can hear this 
really weird humming sound and her husband can't. Hearing this humming noise is just really disrupting the balance of her life. She is getting headaches, she's getting nosebleeds, she's not able to sleep. Then she finds out one of her students can also hear this hum. And I think it's the start of this kind of support group for these people who can hear this noise but nobody else can. Gradually they start finding more people who are able to hear it. I'm fascinated by this idea so really looking forward to seeing what is done with this idea. A couple of books that I received from Emma over at Book Break. I have The Office of Historical Corrections by Danielle Evans. This is a collection of short stories that explore themes of grief and race, apology and history and I have heard such fantastic things about this book. Next I have a young adult novel and that is Slingshot by Mercedes Hellwein. This is a story of first love that is set at a boarding school. It's about two teenagers finding each other and falling in love and how exciting but confusing that is. It's about the stupid things that they end up doing. It's about the friendship in that relationship. It is about sex and it's about bad teenage poetry. Sometimes exactly what you need in your reading life is a young adult romance book. Or maybe that's just me. And I also have another book that is about I think first teenage love and that is Tiger Eyes by Judy Bloom. and I think this is the last book that I needed to get in these editions of Judy Bloom's books. Gradually over a couple of years I have been reading Judy Bloom's books because I never read them when I was a teenager and it's been such a fun reading experience getting through these books. This one I think is aimed at a slightly older age demographic, much like her novel Forever which was one of my favourite books of last year. And this one is about a girl named Davy whose father is shot in a holdup and she is then uprooted to move to New Mexico with an aunt and uncle that she doesn't really know at all. Then she meets Wolf who is described as dark and brooding and mysterious. Much like Judy Bloom's other books this one is quite short, I think this is the type of thing that I would read in one sitting and I think if I enjoy it even half as much as I enjoyed Forever then I'm gonna really like this one. And finally I have a book that I was sent from work. This is a proof of When the World Was Ours by Liz Kessler and it is the story of three friends who spend a brilliant day together unaware of what is happening around them. This is set in 1936 and it is a story of World War II. These three friends are separated and sent to different parts of Europe but despite their lives going in very different directions their lives are always intertwined in some way. This is another one that I should get through in one sitting and I've heard such amazing things from all of the people that I work with that have read this book already. I think it's going to be a really powerful one. So my physical TBR now stands at 118 books. Now I was committed to getting my physical TBR to below 100 books by the end of the first quarter. I failed at that. So in my quarterly reading check-in video I said that my physical TBR had to be below 100 books by the end of April. Otherwise I've got to unhaul stuff. So we shall see how I get on. All of the books I've mentioned will be linked down below in the description if you want to find out more about them. If you have any thoughts on anything I've mentioned in this video do leave me a comment down below or just leave me a little emoji so I know that you're here. What are you currently reading? I would love to know. I hope you guys are doing well and I will speak to you in my next video.